Hi and welcome to Reaper TV. In this week's video we're going to be taking a look at a Brainworks plugin that allows us to take a mono feed and convert it into a pseudo stereo feed. Now this is great if you're dealing with single track guitars and you want to make them sound wider and more interesting. It's going to give you a much better effect than just simply taking the same feed, duplicating it and panning it left and right. So let's take a look at the plugin, let's take a look at what it can do and let's take a look at it actually in action. So I picked up the Brainworks BX Stereo Maker plugin from the Plugin Alliance a couple of days ago because it was on offer. It was one of those plugins that was too cheap to leave there, even though I didn't know if I had any use for it. But I must be honest, after actually taking it out for a test run, it's a great, great piece of software. So if it comes up on offer again, I'd highly recommend picking it up. Even at full price, it's great if you've got a need for this kind of thing. So let's take a look at how it actually works. So let's close this down and go over to my Reaper session. So what I've got at the moment is a single track guitar, just pan center, and if we listen to it, even though it's coming to the left and right, you can tell that it's very much focused as a mono track straight down the middle. So let's listen to that just as it is recorded. Let me just bypass any effects on this. So we're just dealing with a clean signal. So this is the guitar. <laughs> Okay, pretty straightforward. So effects wise, all I currently have on here is an instance of Easy Mix with a particular patch for pedal steel. And I've got a compressor on there just to smooth things out a little bit. So if we listen to it with the effect switch back on. It is very much a mono track guitar straight down the middle. So let's just bring up the plugin and take a look at what it offers us and let's take a look at what it can do to this track. So let's just add a new plugin and I'm just going to go through and I'm going to find my Stereo Maker plugin and let's load that up. Okay, so it's a pretty simple interface. We've got a couple of switches on the left hand side that allow us to reverse the left and right. We can solo the mono feed or we can solo the stereo feed so we can find out exactly what's happening to the, the sound that we're working with. So if we want to find out how much is being pushed out to the sides, we can do that by soloing the stereo. Or we want to see what it would sound like even though it's set up to be stereo or pseudo stereo. What it would sound like on a mono device like a, a phone or a single speaker thing kind of thing. So... Those switches are there for us. We can adjust the output gain if we find that we're losing anything. We can adjust the tone from 20 hertz right there to 2.5 kilohertz. And we've got a few other things on there. But first of all, let's just take a listen to what this does to the feed. And then we'll tweak some of these settings and we'll see how it sort of fares. Okay, so we'll just make sure that the plugin is bypassed so we can listen to the track clean. Just to remind ourselves. And then switch it back on. So what you can tell even with these default settings is that it gives it a lot more width. We're suddenly pushing those, those guitar tones not only in the center but we're pushing some stereo width on there as well which like I say if you've only got one guitar feed and you don't want to go back and double track it, this is going to give you that extra width to your, your mix without having to, to resort to other techniques. So let's just take a look at what some of these settings do. So if I solo the mono feeds, let's just play this. If we solo the mono feed... Solo the stereo so we can hear what's actually being pushed out to the sides. So 
as you can see, we've got a set of peak meters below. So they've got the RMS and the left right peak. We've also got a balance. So if we find that for any reason that the audio we're working with is kind of leaning to the left or to the right, we've got a couple of options we can use to recenter or focus that. Or alternatively, if we want to take that and and focus it slightly left or focus it slightly right, we can use a tilt function. If we want to push it hard left, hard right, or control the actual physical pan, we can flick that switch over and just deal with the pan side of things. So this is a great little function. Like I say, if you find that the sound is kind of veering one way or the other, then you can use the tilt function just to adjust for that. And you can use your meters below just to check to see if you are veering, veering off to the left or to the right. So you can use that. You can turn that on and off. So it can be bypassed. You've also got the tone, the high damp, the mono frequency, and the stereo exp ex expansion, if I could get my words out. So the tone is one of the only things that we can't actually physically switch on and off. But what this does is it, it, it controls the... Um, the different sound sources it allows us to, to find a setting that will let this sit in the mix so you can adjust that adjust which frequencies are being affected and if we just run this and i'll dial through those 11 different markers just so you can kind of see what this does to the sound so let's just put that back right the way down and we'll just play and i'll adjust these as we go now you're going to find some weird little glitch in that's just as the frequencies are adjusted with the plugin it takes a, a second or so or a little bit of time to update so you may hear some weird things but that's only when we're switching between those different tone settings <laughs> So as you can see, it does make a difference to the sound, and it's one of those things that even the manual says you need to play with this to find out what works well in your particular instance, what works well in your mix. So there's no hard and fast rules with this. It's a case of adjust it, find out what works for you, and then use it. Okay, so next up, we've got the high damp. Now, this gives us from 0 to 100%, and what this effectively does is it allows us to control the higher frequency range above, above 5 kilohertz. So if you find that your sound is starting to get a little bit thin and tinny, you can adjust this to bring a sense of warmth back into it and reduce that thinness at the top end. So again, we'll adjust, adjust that with this particular track playing. You may notice a little bit of a difference. It might be quite subtle. And again, it's one of those things that you'll notice it. If you need it, it starts to get thin. You can use this to adjust it accordingly. So let's just, let's just play the track again and have a listen to that as I adjust it. bypass this just by hitting the high damp at the top and then next we've got the mono frequency now this allows us to control um, what frequencies in our audio remain mono so in other words we could say that the lower frequencies the bass let's just say for example we were dealing with something that was a full mix that was recorded in mono and we were trying to make a pseudo stereo um, mix from it we would we would want the kick drum and the bass drum and all the lower frequencies to sit still straight down the middle we wouldn't want those to be pushed out to the sides because that's going to create a strange effect so you can use this to control the frequencies from 200 sorry, from 20 hertz to 250 hertz all your low frequencies and you can just focus those in the middle so anything that sits below the frequency you select will remain straight down the middle and remain a mono source everything above it will be pushed out to the sides so we're not going to hear too much of that in this particular instance i'll show you we may hear a little bit of it but just to bear in mind that if you're dealing with something that's got a lot of lower frequencies this is something that will allow you to sort of focus those where you want them to be so again, let's just run the track. I'll adjust that and we'll see if we can see any difference in this particular piece of music. Again, we can simply switch it on and off.
And then finally, we've got the stereo expansion. Now, what this does is it controls how much the stereo field is pushed out to the sides. In other words, the higher the setting, the more spatial the sound is going to appear, the more stereo the sound is going to appear. Now, you can find that if you push this a little too hard, up to sort of 300%, it can start to sound a little bit weird. So again, adjust to taste. Be careful what you're doing with this because you can very easily create a very strange sound. So let's just adjust that on this track. Let's pull these frequencies back down and the damp frequencies and everything. Put these to sort of a neutral position. And let's just try the stereo expansion. Now, one of the things to bear in mind is the correlation meter. You can see at the moment that sits at green. And as you adjust the stereo expansion, you'll tend to find that will change color. Now, the thing that you're aiming for here is to ensure that you can peak a little bit in the orange and even up to the red, but you don't want to stay in there for everything. If you find that's the case, then you not start to need adjust you start to need to adjust the stereo expression expansion and bring that back down to get into the green zone. So you'll find, I'll run this again and watch as I actually take this up over sort of 100% up to 300%, you'll see the correlation meter will start to change color. So let's just run this again. Keep an eye on the correlation meter. You can see we're now orange stroke red, which is too far. So we can pull that back. And there we go, back predominantly in the green zone. So, the final range of options we have are at the top. We can bypass this. We can obviously undo and redo, but what we also have is four banks of settings that we can use to, to test different parts of the or different settings that we've got on here. The other thing that's very, very cool about this plugin is all of these parameters can be controlled via your door. So let's just say, for example, that you adjusted this for the verse and you wanted the chorus of your song to be slightly different, then you could set up an A and a B and a C and a D and so on. And then you can use automation in your door to switch between those different parameters at any given point in the song. So that's a really, really cool way of actually using this for, with multiple settings throughout one song. So it's very easy to do. You can just sort of set up, choose a bank. And we'll just make some, switch over to bank B. We'll make some adjustments. And we switch back to bank A, bank B, and we can do the same for C and D, and we can copy and paste and do other things. So it's very, very easy. Well, that's the BX Stereo Maker from Brainworks. I hope this has given you sort of an idea of how you could use this. And I think, like I say, it's a great little tool if you can't uh, get access to double track guitars or double track vocals, and you want to create that more stereo sound. I recommend checking it out, download the trial version, see what you think of it. And if it's on offer, it's worth picking up, even at full price. If you've got a need for this, this is a great piece of software. Well, I hope you found this video useful. If you have, please hit the subscribe button. If you've got any comments, questions, or feedback on this, or anything else we cover on this channel, please put those in the comment section below. Remember, we release new videos every single Friday, so keep an eye out for that. And if you subscribe, you'll uh, you be up to date, kept up to date. And if you want exclusive content not available anywhere else, please visit www.reapertv.co.uk where we've got content that's available only on the website. Well, until next time, happy mixing.